This is Special Chronicles, giving respect and a voice to people with special needs. I shudder thinking how the world can be so cruel. And my voice to those who can't. It's time we try, it's time we care, it's time we stand. It starts with a voice. Welcome to the Special Chronicles podcast presents Energy Force Series, Season 7, Part 9. My name is Daniel Spokowski. I'm the founder of Special Chronicles, an Energy Force ambassador with ComEd, and a Southern Travel Global Ambassador alum with Special Olympics. Our website specialchronicles.com to follow Special Chronicles on socials and wherever you get podcasts this week. On Special Chronicles presents Energy Force Series, Season 7, Part 9. Our topic is the ComEd smelt grid and our guests are uh, Chris, uh, the senior business manager, the senior business program manager at ComEd and Kuita, the principal program manager for smart grid programs from ComEd, our guests this week as we talk all about the ComEd smart grid, uh, how, it benef- um, how it benefits you, the customer and um, community of the future programs. Please put your virtual hands together as we welcome Kuita and uh, Chris on the Special Chronicles podcast. Welcome. Good to have you both on the program. Yeah, thanks for having us. And thank you for having us, Danny. Yeah, absolutely. And um, this um, this is a topic that. If our listeners and you guys had just um, um, in the pre-show before we started recording, you had asked, "Well, how how to listen to our Energy Force series?" And so um, we we probably should tell more people about this QR code that they can scan if you're watching the um, video podcast on our YouTube channel. Uh, you can scan this right now if you're watching it on your TV or your computer. Uh, we haven't figured out how to scan QR codes if you're watching on your phone. Uh, <laughs> but with um, with that, I, I say that you had one of the previous episodes of this series. Um, it might have been the last episode of the series. I mean, the, the, the episode before this episode is airing, I think. Um, and I forgot exactly. Um, but... Uh, it was about the education centers. And I think on that episode, and maybe also a previous one, but we we had mentioned, we had briefly mentioned the, the smart grid, but didn't get into a, a lot of detail. So that's what uh, I'm, I'm glad that we'll have in you both on um, to tell us about that. But before we get into that, why don't um, um, you both tell us about your role at ComEd. We'll, we'll start with uh, um, ladies first. So, Kuita, we'll, we'll start with you, and then we'll pass it all over to Chris. Sure. Thanks, Daniel. Um, my name is Karita Ellis. I work at ComEd in our Smart Grid Programs Department, and I'm a Principal Business Program Manager. And essentially what that means, and we're going to talk a little bit about what the Smart Grid is, but we're trying to figure out new ways for the electrical system to work. And so in our department, we run a lot of uh, pilot programs to figure out what's going to work, what doesn't work, what's the best way of doing it. And in particular, in our department, we also go out into the community to find out what our community partners need, like the residents, the businesses, everyone who is going to be subject to these changes that we make to the grid to make sure that they are being heard and that we're not uh, you know, executing programs that have no value to them. And so for a lot of these pilot programs, a lot of these initiatives, I'm the person who brings people together so that we can figure out the best way to do it. And I'll pass it over to Chris. Yeah, wonderful. Thank you, Krita. Um, And thank you, Daniel, again for the invitation. Uh, My job is uh, currently to work within our community of the future footprint. So ComEd has designated the city of Rockford, as well as the neighborhood of Bronzeville, which is just south of like the McCormick Place and before you get to High Park. 
and within that footprint. Um, and we work with the community uh, leaders, community uh, stakeholders to uh, promote different comment offerings, uh, such as rebates uh, and incentives. We uh, let them know about what's coming up, what we're planning. We also do some uh, demonstration projects where we have kiosks and agricultural pods and different really cool technologies that we place into the community for the uh, benefit of that community. Um, and then we uh, work with those stakeholders to inform them about comment things, but then we also uh, learn about their initiatives and goals and bring them to comment and connect them with people internally so that they can uh, achieve their goals within uh, the electrification space. And, uh, and then I also get to uh, run some cool pilot programs too that we'll talk about uh, that are really cool um, awesome. that are uh, potentially launching very soon. So we'll see some of these pilots finally get to uh, life and uh, yeah. start uh, enjoying uh, the benefits of some of the electrification pilots we're working on. Awesome, awesome. So I'm excited to dive into all of that about the small grid pro um, programs as well as these pilot programs and maybe a, I'm sure even uh, hopefully giving uh, our listeners a, um, a, a perhaps an exclusive um, both look at some of these pilot programs. Uh, and so uh, after a quick, um, a quick break, um, we'll be um, back with Kuita and Chris uh, as we dive into the smart grid and the and, and the pilot programs, I'm coming up. I'm coming up right here on Special Chronicles presents uh, Energy Force series season seven, uh, right here on SpecialChronicles.com. And with that, support for Special Chronicles comes from listeners like you. Please join our supporters with a monthly or one-time donation so we can operate our studio and. Uh, and continue our mission, giving respect and voice to those of us with disabilities. Uh, if you want to uh, uh, join Special Chronicles Plus to access our exclusive bonus content and the pre-show of what it was like to uh, uh, to to get the recording set up today, and we break down that fourth wall of the studio. You can join right now, SpecialChronicles.com/plus. Uh, it's very simple. Um, just head, on, head on over to specialchronicles.com slash plus. Uh, type your name and email and a simple uh, $10 a month and up or just um, a, a one-time donation of even just $1 is, is uh, a, a, any bit helps. Very, very simple. I want to let you and all of our listeners know that um, this morning um, to um, we, uh, we've uh, it's only been a couple of months that we have we have this new bonus content um, uh, available, and I just myself tested it out with a donation to, I know I'm the host and founder of this podcast platform and this program, but I myself just um, also um, have donated, and so um, it definitely um, works. Um, but if you, have, if you have any questions, you guys can reach out to us. Uh, there's a contact page on specialchronicles.com. And with that, uh, I hopefully my video is not frozen, but with that, um, Kuita and Chris, um, as we dive into the Combat Smart Grid, can you tell us a little bit about what what is the the Combat Smart Grid? Awesome, great question. So the Smart Grid is and is part of is is our electrical system mm -hmm. where you know you receive your power. Um, but it has really cool digital technologies that uh, help uh, the system to communicate when there are problems, when there's potential outages. Uh, and it also is awesome because it can reroute power uh, from one substation to another so that uh, outages don't occur as long as they may have done in the past. Uh, so we have like in like smart substations, smart switches, and at each home you now have a smart meter. So if you go outside, you'll see a little plastic casing with a with a smart reader, smart meter that helps you to understand how much uh, power you're consuming. Uh, it lets ComEd directly communicate and understand what's happening with the power at your house and how the delivery is going. Uh, and if you download the ComEd mobile app. 
you can actually track your usage on a daily basis, mm -hmm. uh, weekly and monthly, and see how you are consuming power within your home. So all that is uh, possible through the enhancements on our smart grid system. Awesome, awesome. I love that. And um, as I'm sure a lot of a lot of our listeners know, um, might be wondering, uh, the, uh, it's 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 neat that that Kamrad is getting into the space with the smart grid. But how how does it benefit the customer? Um, I know Chris or Kuita, if you, if you want to. Um, uh, uh, join in, but how how does this benefit the customer? Yeah, and Chris spoke to um, a, a little bit about to how the smart grid benefits the customer because you know we'd like to think that things that are smarter work a little better for us, and so you know right now you're getting your electricity. Yeah. Comment has pretty reliable yeah. electricity. But um, we know that people are thinking of new types of technology. They want electric vehicles. They want to, you know, have electric vehicle chargers, um, uh, heat pumps. All of this different technology that we're starting to use means that we're going to need more electricity. And we have um, uh, pieces of equipment that are a lot more sensitive. And so we can't have the, you know, variations that we may have traditionally seen because it may affect the equipment. And so with the smart grid being able to communicate a little faster, a little better, to see things on a smaller scale, that means that, you know, that keeps your stuff safe. It means that we don't have to build a whole bunch of infrastructure out. It means that we can just use special sensors and special types of technology to say, hey, this customer over here may have some sort of issue. Let's go check it out before they have an outage. Or, oh, we can pinpoint exactly where the outage is instead of having somebody go out and walk around to try to figure it out. And that means that you won't be out as long. And so, you know, all of these enhancements make it so that you get better, more reliable, uh, more qu uh, quicker responses when it comes to any issues that you may encounter. And it makes it so that you can, you know, uh, start using these different new interesting technologies without uh, having to think that we would not be able to support it. So, you know, it does all of these things. It supports and it also allows you to do new and different things on your end. Awesome, awesome. Uh, we're gonna uh, uh, take a you know, quick break. When we get back, we'll uh, get into the ComEd and dive more into the ComEd beneficial electrification pilots, the pilots, Chris, that, 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 that you had mentioned at the, at the top of the program. Um, but we'll get into... Um, all of that right after a you know, quick, quick sponsor break right here on SpecialChronicles.com. To let you all know that support for Special Chronicles comes from uh, our presenting sponsor on the program is the Climate Energy Force Ambassador Program, the country's first energy and solar efficiency education program designed for and taught by people with, with disabilities like myself. And there's actually 30 of us ambassadors. You can learn more at specialchronicles.com slash ComEd, specialchronicles.com slash ComEd. And we also have um, all of the resources uh, the, uh, uh, on this series, and we will be adding more resources that Kuita and Chris are giving us. Um, we've got um, all the resources that only are in the show notes for this episode, but also all, all on specialchronicles.com slash ComEd. So if, if you all um, head on over to specialchronicles.com slash ComEd, you can find the links to all the resources. So with nice, nice, and a nice, uh, I think one of our previous guests, Kuita and and Chris uh, have said that it, it's it's like we 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 have a catalog of resources mm -hmm. on special chronicle on flash comment. Uh, so with that, um, any, since since Chris you, you had um you you had uh, briefly mentioned at the top of the program about the pilots, can you tell us about because um, this is just like um a lot of the a lot of the topics on this series, um. I, well, I've been with the Energy Force program for now. Uh, this is my seventh year, but a lot of these topics is, is is new to me, and I know is will be beneficial for our listeners too. Uh, that we're able to give our listeners because um, a lot of times when we're out in the community at events, uh, we're able we we only have a small amount of time to talk to the customers, mm -hmm. but the, at least this series gives all gives our gives the community a chance to dive a little bit more deeper 
uh, into some of these topics. And that's the, mm -hmm. the great thing about a podcast is you can listen anytime, anywhere. And so with that, Chris, can you, and, and then Koida, you, you, you can chime in as well, but uh, Chris, can you share with us about the ComEd beneficial uh, electrification pilots? What are these pilots all about? Yeah, sure can, but I'm actually going to defer to the expert because <laughs> Korea is, is leading this project uh, the entire company. So she's the expert on all of the pilots. I'm an expert on a few of the pilots. So I'll defer okay. to her to lead and then I'll I'll chime in. So yeah, awesome. Ahead, awesome. Okay. Don't let him get away with that, guys. He yeah, he has lots of subject matter knowledge, but I'll take it. I'll take it. Um, so yeah, I, I don't know if everyone's aware. A CJA, CJA, CJA is something that you may hear, and it is an acronym. It stands for the Climate Equitable Jobs Act. It's something that was signed into law by our Governor Pritzker in 20, and I always get the year wrong. I think it's 2021. Uh, and so as a result of that being signed, and, and the whole idea behind it was for us to realize, hey, there are these new technologies. Um, air quality could be better. There are lots of uh, carbon emissions that are not great for the health of our communities. What can we do to bring some of that down and mitigate that? And so uh, as part of that act that was signed into law, uh, there's also something called the Electric Vehicle Act. And as part of that, any utility that services more than 500,000 customers had to come up with their own, what they call beneficial electrification plan that would explain what they would do to support the goals of getting emissions down, getting more electric vehicles on the road and other uh, beneficial electrification technologies. How can we help customers get those things and, and support them in their transition efforts? And so as part of our first beneficial electrification plan at ComEd, there are eight pilots that we needed to run. And so they run the gamut. Chris is running a pilot on a ride share because we know a lot of people don't necessarily own cars or drive all the time. Uh, and so when it comes to electric vehicles, they might not buy one of those either, but they might want access to one. Like maybe you need to go to the doctor, maybe you need to run an Ikea, get you some new, you know, drawers. And so, you know, he's running a pilot that, you know, has it so that there's an electric vehicle that you can rent for a short amount of time whenever you need it. We have other pilots where, you know, right now the grid, we deliver power to you. But sometimes with those batteries that you have in your electric vehicles or the big batteries in, in school buses, you, we might be able to, you might be able to send power back to the grid and help us out when there's, a, you know, a need for additional power because everyone has their lights on and they're playing video games and doing all this other stuff. So there's a pilot to look at how the power can flow back and forth between the grid and the customer. Uh, there's another pilot looking at uh, installing curbside charging so that people who aren't able to install it at home can still have access to it. So all of these pilots are meant for us to look at ways of helping the customers have access to different technologies that you may be hearing about. Um, but because we're a utility, we have to figure out how to connect them. So there's that technical part. But we also have to talk to customers to figure out how they want to see it. Like, is there a certain place that would be better for you? Um, what about cost? Are you concerned about cost? And what can we do when we're building out these programs to consider that? And so that's what the pilots are all about. That's what we mean when we say beneficial electrification. All that means is that things that used to be maybe gas powered are not going to be electric powered. And it's beneficial because it's going to bring down greenhouse gases and make air quality a little better and all these other things. But, you know, how can we do it in a way that's, you know, least cost to the customer, but also works for ComEd as the utility? Awesome. 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 Um, Chris, did you, uh, I, I know you deferred this uh, to, to Kuita, but since she did say that, that, that you, uh, I, I, I want to bring it back to you since she said that, yeah, no that, that you're already championing the wide shell program. Can, can, can you, uh, and just because just we want to, not keep this episode that long, so we won't dive into uh, to to uh, to to all the pilots. And but we'll make sure to put um, links. Um, we'll get to those links at the in, in the final segment in just a few moments, folks. But um, Chris, did you want to elaborate a little bit more on the the, the wide share program that Koita said that you are champion? Just since uh, she said that you also have uh, a wealth of <laughs> experience. 
Of course, of course. And yes, rideshare is very near and near and dear to me because uh, we ha with this pilot specifically, we are uh, focusing in on an economic justice and our three communities, which is restore, reinvest, and renew uh, communities. Uh, to invest in EV charging and EV car adoption. Uh, many times this, the, the EJ, R3 community uh, may be left out of the conversation on adopting electric vehicles or, or, or making incentives available so that the uh, high costs associated with switching from a gas power car to an electric vehicle um, is possible for everyone. So. We took this challenge uh, to uh, figure out the best way uh, quickly and efficiently to distribute as many electric vehicles as we can within these specific communities. Um, and so we're, we've partnered with a ride share company to provide the vehicles, uh, support uh, customers, with using the vehicles, um, ensuring ve vehicles, making sure they're clean and ready to be uh, utilized and make sure that that overall customer experience is, is top notch. Uh, and we've also worked, we're also working with different uh, EV charging companies to demonstrate some new technologies on how to install charging quickly, efficiently, and uh, and in new ways so that maintenance doesn't become a big problem. Sometimes if an EV charger goes down, uh, it may take a, 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 a significant amount of time to, to get the proper pieces, to repair them, to figure out mm -hmm. what's wrong. And we want to mitigate that risk and make sure that uh, these cars that we place to the community are available, they're charged up, and they're ready to uh, to be utilized by, by, our, by our specific customer target group. Um, we're excited to launch this in we have we have two potential sites uh, within our Bronzeville footprint where uh, our team has worked to install community curbside charging uh, to provide charging within uh, the residential community is big. Right now, many of the charging options are, are downtown or, or mm -hmm. South Loop. There's yeah, yeah. there's not many options the further south and the further west you west. get in the city of Chicago. So we're working to put that charging in place so that uh, EJ communities have access to charging. And what we've seen so far is that people are using these chargers. There mm -hmm. are EVs in this community, and we're providing uh, electric charging uh, close to them, reliable and at a very uh, marketable rate so that customers are able to use this and charge and keep on moving. Um, and so we're working on just placing our cars, some cars there. We're working on placing some cars in Rockford, which is our, uh, our, our second community of the future. And we're working with local governments. We're working with small business owners. We're working with anybody within these communities who wants to uh, install some charging and let us test out this uh, pilot in which we want to see uh, like the age old field of dreams uh, line, <laughs> build it, they will come. If we mm -hmm. put the charging in place, if we place EVs in the community, will the people use them? Will customers enjoy this service? And we, we're gonna test that. We're gonna test that to the end of 2025 and build a case so that uh, rideshare companies will see the investment outside of downtown areas, outside of typically uh, er typical areas where they may uh, place their vehicles, but thinking outside the box and increasing the footprint of rideshare availability. That is, those are all some of the things we're going to be testing and, and, and figuring out if this can uh, live without the support of ComEd. Uh, but also empowering local communities to get involved in these type of uh, programs that are available. So we're going to, uh, you know, work really hard over the next year and a half, so to speak, mm -hmm. uh, and really get these pilots off the ground. And hopefully at the end of these pilots, we'll see that 
you know, ride sharing is, is a great viable option for, for people who primarily may not have the means to buy, operate, and own um, and maintain uh, EVs uh, as an as a owner. But, but try this new, new way out of, of sharing the ride. Awesome. Our, that's our swing at this. So hopefully it works awesome. out. We'll come back awesome. and let you know uh, how, how it went. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. So um, hopefully um, uh, next year we can, um, for season eight of this series, hopefully we can um, uh, bring you back on to, uh, um, in, in now that you have, and I've, I've had other guests that have, um, uh, come back on as well. So if, if you want to come back on in 2025, um, uh, feel free to reach out and, and would love to, um, uh, well, we, we, we work with the energy force program to figure out topics, but yeah, we'll, we'll have to figure, figure, that, figure that out. Um, as a way to tra transition to kind of the, the follow, the, the, fo the follow-up question, dealing with the customer, um, what, Chris, what, what you were saying about the, um, uh, um, I don't have an, an electric call, but um, a family friend of, uh, of ours um, does. And uh, and I remember I th uh, a couple years ago, we were going to, I believe it was a Bills game. It was, it was, it was either a Bills or a Sox game. I forgot one of those. Mm -hmm. And I remember, uh, we were in their uh, electric car, and um, there, there wasn't a lot of, like what you said, Chris, there wasn't an, a, a, a lot of um, places to to charge. And so with that, that family friend, that ComEd customer, uh, uh, who's a, a friend of my family, using that as an example, uh, how can uh, these pilots, uh, whether it's the one that Chris that you shared or, or the, the few Kuita that you had just talked about, but how can these pilots benefit the customer like like my family friend with their uh, electric car? Uh, will, um, going down, I, I know the, the, the football season just started and mm -hmm. you, you're down to Soldier Field to to go catch a Chicago Bears game, uh, how how can these pilots, such as the um, curbside charging and the wide chill, benefit uh, uh, the, the uh, customer? Yeah, great question. Um, I'll also not just outside of these pilots. Uh, Comet in general is is your biggest advocate for charging installation and understanding how that process works for you as a residential customer. Um, and, and one thing we do very well is we, we, we have teams that support this. You can call. Um, I'll uh, make sure I find that number for you so you can put it up in your notes. Um, but we have incentives available for charging, um, putting in a charging install installs in your home, uh, especially if you, Maybe a low income customer. We offer some extra incentives to help uh, alleviate some of the burden of installing home charging. Mm -hmm. We have a marketplace in which you can actually purchase an EV charging unit. Uh, so you can, you know, partner with ComEd to, to make these changes and, and, and updates in your home, uh, it, especially as you transition from being a gas powered. Uh, driver to an electric driver, you know, what better partner can you have than the electric company to help guide you through that process? So you can always call us at 1-800-EDISON-1 and talk to a customer service representative and just, you know, let them know about what you're thinking, what you want to install, and they can help guide you through the process uh, of, of what those incentives might be to help with any kind of installations you might want to do within your home. Uh, as far as the pilots, uh, you know, curbside charging is is one of the newer concepts of putting charging in the public right of way, which is nice because you can just park your car on a residential street and, and and charge. You don't have to worry about finding a private lot or paying additional fees and parking for for charging. Uh, 
while you were at uh, Soldier Field, our Bronzeville Chargers are just about a five minute drive south of where you were off Lakeshore mm -hmm. Drive. So like we're in your specific <laughs> example, you can yeah. utilize those chargers if you if you chose to, if you chose so maybe, to uh, uh, wait out the traffic, uh, leaving Soldier Field <laughs> going back uh, to your home. Um, but we're looking to make charging, making the burden of charging easier on the customer, whether it's home installation, whether it's public charging, uh, we, we're just trying to be better liaisons between the, the customer and the actual uh, change in lifestyle of, of how you live your life using an electric vehicle. Um, and it can be quite a challenge if you don't maybe have a single family home or you live in a multi-unit building, you know, where are you going to find charging? And so that's where we're coming in to kind of test to see where we can install and work with uh, business owners, work with municipalities or small local governments to uh, figure out the best place for these uh, charging. And Karita may want to jump in on this because that's her, actually her pilot she's running is mm -hmm. curbside charging and some of the great benefits of that. So I'll, I'll pass it over to you. No, you said it all. You said it all. <laughs> the benefits, I mean, you did a really wonderful job of just pointing out the different ways that we're trying to support. It's all about access. Um, we find that a lot of times when we're talking about um, equality, uh, what's equitable, oftentimes that means that people just don't have access to things, whether that's the knowledge, the know-how, uh, the resources to get it done, the cost may be too high, uh, all of those different things. We're trying, you know, we have a knowledge campaign. If you go to our website, we actually have a toolkit. So you can, you know, crunch some numbers. There's a calculator to show you how would this benefit you in terms of cost if you change to an EV vehicle. We also have, you know, our pilot programs. If you don't know where to begin, you come to us. We'll do the design. We'll do the construction. And then, you know, you can see how the process goes. And then, um, like Chris said, we have rebates. And then there are rebates, you know, according to where you are. We're talking thousands of dollars to help you on the cost of the install or the cost of the vehicles. And so, you know, in a lot of cases, this, you know, when, when it comes to benefits, we're talking, you know, benefits in all the different areas that you would want to see to help you make the decisions uh, to whether or not to electrify and if it's for you. Awesome, awesome. Um, speaking of the, I want to uh, just um, before we, we move on to the final segment, highlight Kuita something that you had said, um, which uh, about the um, um, calculator uh, that mm -hmm. was just something that uh, this morning. Oh no, Daniel. Can you hear us? You, uh, we lost you for a second. Are you there? Oh, yes, I am okay. still. Okay. Yes, I am still here. Can you? I think the. Oh, wait. The I video, can hear you. Let's yep, see. Yep, I can hear you. Okay. You can still hear me. Okay. Um, I think my my video might have. Yeah, it's I think frozen. it might be. Yeah, it's fine. There oh no, go. you're I, back. There we are. You're back. I, there we go. I'm back. We're good. Um, hopefully, maybe. Okay. Uh, anyway, I think I'm back now. So mm -hmm. with that, what I was saying, Kuita, you had uh, you had uh, talked about the uh, calculator, and th this morning, um, well, when I was uh, well um, over my um, um, oatmeal uh, um, breakfast and watching a couple <laughs> comedy podcast. Yeah, I also had my my email inbox up, and mm -hmm. my dad, who's the business manager uh, at Special Chronicles, um, he had followed me uh, in a ComEd uh, a newsletter that highlighted one of the um, calculators, and that's something mm -hmm. that I, I maybe we could just briefly mention that um, for those um, uh, uh, do. do any of the, whether it's the pilot programs or any of the smart grid um, programs, do, do, do you guys have any of these highlighted in the ChiMed newsletter that gets sent out each month to uh, um, customers? Not the pilots, only because they're meant to run for a very short amount of time. To, uh, as Chris said, they end in 2025. 
Yeah. And we can only have a small we amount of customers participate. So we didn't want to put it too far. But there is a pilot website, website too. Can there we can give you a link to so pilot people website. Can access it and read more about it. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. I want to take one final break. When we get, we get back, we'll, we will um, talk all about the. Sorry, my watch is going off. I thought I turned the notific. I swear, I thought I turned the notifications off. Um, <laughs> with that, I, yeah, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. You, well, yeah, it was. Anyways, um, with that, um, uh, w- when we get back, we will get into all about the com- community of the future of programs, as well as some resource links for all of you listening, and some final thoughts uh, at the end of the program with our guests. Uh, Kuita and uh, Chris uh, right here on SpecialChronicles.com. Um, we will be right back to let you all know that uh, support for Special Chronicles comes from uh, the I hopefully it is there we go. I think it's being a little slow today um being a little slow today you go support for special chronicles comes from united airlines bridge disability business resource group connecting people of all abilities learn more on united's commitment to disability inclusion for employment and travel at specialchronicles.com slash united that's specialchronicles.com slash united and with that um Corita and chris one to j- j- just uh, as we wrap up in the final few moments of our time together and let you get back to uh, to uh, the, the rest of your um, Monday and be, be beginning of the week. Uh, can you tell us about the community of the future programs and, and, and what this is all about? Yeah, I'll take that one. Um, so uh, the community of the future uh program is just a collaborative effort between Comet and the uh, communities that we serve to develop, um, execute, and evaluate projects and programs uh, that really facilitate clean energy transition. Um, we do some work with climate resilience as well. Um, and you know our, the, the the work we do prioritizes just energy equity, public health, economic opportunity, and just like creating as great of communication as we can do between Comed and the communities we're we're serving. Um, sometimes the the Comed's doing so much all the time that sometimes we don't always best communicate that work to our communities. So we help to alleviate some of those burdens of reaching our a, 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 a great customer base and community stakeholders to try and spread the word of some of the programs and offerings that ComEd uh, is doing. And our work is strategically placed within Bronzeville and Rockford, the, the whole city of Rockford to, to try and like test out how these, uh, how this communication and collaboration can work. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much our why. Uh, and so I'll just tell you a little bit about the programs that we are currently working on and some that we've wrapped up. But uh, we've done some work uh, with air quality monitoring um, within the city of Rockford and Bronzeville. Um, And now we're looking to expand that project in some other communities within the BE pilots. But some of that work started uh, within the Community of Future group. Uh, Another program we're really excited about is our agricultural pods. And so basically what they are are greenhouses and they are temperature controlled, they're Wi-Fi enabled, and you can really run and operate this greenhouse through Wi-Fi, through your phone, through an app. You can talk you can water the the plants you can change the lighting in the in the greenhouse to 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 accommodate different types of crops that you want to grow uh, we have four of them out right now we have one uh in DeKalb, illinois that we've partnered with the the city of uh, the the university of northern illinois university um and it's a currently supporting their dining hall and different initiatives they have on campus to provide food to the to the to the students. 
Um, we have one in North Lawndale, which is just slightly west of uh, Bronzeville. We have one in Bronzeville, of course, and then we have one in this, the community of Inglewood. And they are all supporting different local uh, urban farming efforts that are happening within the city of Chicago so that they can continue to produce uh, crops throughout the year. You know, once, you know, pretty rare for Chicago to be this warm in September. We're, mm -hmm. we're looking at like almost 90 degree days. Mm -hmm. We know that's not going to last in, in Chicago. We know that the the hawk is coming. Mm -hmm. The frigid cold is coming. <laughs> Um, and so we want to be able to still provide uh, nutritious, uh, farm to table uh, food to, to the community. And this is one of the, the programs we're testing that out with. Um, another program we have is, is our community microgrid, which is really the grandfather of all of these programs in which we've invested so much into Bronzeville. Um, We've built a microgrid that's, uh, you know, self-sustaining and that will be able to deliver power to the uh, footprint within Bronzeville so that if anything ever happened to our main power system, this microgrid would be able to deliver power to those uh, people in, in, in Bronzeville. Um, we, 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 it's working, it's operable, and uh, it's doing well. We're, we're still testing out this new kind of technology. We're one of the, the leaders in the industry on, on microgrids, especially in the, the, in, in the United States of America. And so uh, that's one of the larger investments that uh, this team has been able to support. Um, we have uh, our, one of the programs that we're very excited about is our community charging. Um, we called it, it's, it's our MUD uh, charging uh, project that uh, stands for multi-unit dwelling. So home apartment buildings that have three or more units. Uh, and we partnered with the Department of Energy to test out community curbside charging. And so that program is going pretty well. We've got five chargers out in the community of Brownsville that are actively used and uh, available to the community. Um, and, and, and last, well, I'll, I'll give you two more programs. The last one out is, is near and dear to me because it's one of my programs. <laughs> We've done some uh, next generation HVAC uh, piloting where We've put in some state-of-the-art uh, uh, HVAC systems. So that's your heating and your cooling system in, in your home. Um, and we partnered with one uh, group in Bronzeville and one group in uh, the city of Rockford to completely upgrade the uh, heating and cooling systems to a uh, VRF system, which stands for um, Electric Variable Refrigerant flow system. And we installed this, uh, our first unit at the historic Quinn Chapel here in Chicago in Bronzeville. Um, very famous uh, building, Martin Luther King met there. It was a, it, it's been a staple in the community um, for all, over a century at this point, um, but it's never had air conditioning. Um, and so we are able to, you know, help pay for and install and work with the construction and development of that project to put in a whole new heating and cooling system so that this hundred year old charts can now actually have events in the summer and actually, you know, be comfortable for the community and the, the, the people attending meetings and, and services at that facility. We've also partnered with the city of Rockford to help uh, with the boys and girls club, uh, one of the local boys and girls clubs in Rockford. They had, such a terrible, I guess I shouldn't say terrible, but it was a it was an awful <laughs> that had one part of their building at 85 degrees and another part of their building at 30 degrees. And they could not flush in the summertime, uh, the 80 degrees, they had to open the windows and mm -hmm. still run the air conditioning to try and get that temperature to be great. Um, they also uh weren't able to have air conditioning in certain parts of the building and that building serviced so many kids especially like coming home from school needing a place to to work and be safe between school being out and uh parents being available for for the the afternoon evening routines and this we've been able to just help them to completely redo their system and provide like just temperature controlled throughout 
throughout this building. Um, and they also, uh, you know, renovated certain parts of it to just, you know, present this beautiful updated uh, space for for the for the kids in that in that area. So we do a lot of cool things where we get to just partner with community groups and provide the resources that ComEd wants. ComEd wants to test these pilots. We need to test these pilots. We need to understand how this technology works and how best to implement these things. Mm -hmm. And so we get to find those unique partners and bring the technology to them um, as a benefit to. Uh, helping us to test these things. And the last project I'll talk about is our resilient canopy study. So you were telling me earlier that you did a wonderful uh, podcast uh, on trees and the benefit of shading um, as, as, a, as a mitigation risk for temperature controlling. And so we took it a step further and actually did some future projections to see what strategic planting of trees might benefit the community so that, uh, you know, in the case that temperatures rise in the future in 2030 and 2050, we can figure out now how best to plant trees and landscaping to make sure that uh, apartment buildings and small homes, uh, single family homes can have the proper shading in place to try and mitigate the risks of uh, your, 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 your cooling bill going through the roof mm -hmm. because you've got to run your air conditioning at a higher rate um, because temperatures outside are hotter. Um, so if we place some trees around, you know, the community and the properties, we can best, uh, you know, mitigate the risk and, and uh, hopefully, you know, control the demand of electricity use uh, throughout the, the upcoming years as temperatures may and probably will continue to rise. So uh, we're just doing some really cool things to try and make sure that not only is the community benefiting today, but that we're putting things in place for the future so that the work we're doing now will still be impactful for years to come. Awesome, awesome. Uh, this has been very beneficial for our um, listeners. And uh, I know I've learned a lot. Um, I, I'm gonna also include um, in addition to these um, resources that we're just about to mention, I'm gonna in the uh, in, in the notes for the, for this episode, I'm gonna also put links to if if um, you all want to go back and listen to the Powering Lives Education episode, but then also the Trees for You and Me episode, mm -hmm. uh, we'll put links in the in the notes for the for this episode. But also, um, Chris and Quita, uh, um, you. Um, um, shared um, with with me a few resources links. So if, if our listeners want to, I know we in 47 minutes we've dived um, uh, briefly into the smart grid and the pilot frameworks. But if our listeners want to learn more, um, Whale can. Uh, I'll, for those of you watching the video podcast on our YouTube, uh, you can see it on the screen. But for those of you listening to the audio podcast. Um, look down below, not if you are driving, or walking, <laughs> but like when, when it's safe to do so. I always have to say that because um, we have listeners um, who might be commuting uh, or driving and we don't want you to, we don't want you to get in an accident by us telling you right now to look down. So, um, but with that, um, Chris and Quito, uh, what else some um, of the resource links that um, we can uh point all listeners to. Yeah, so if you want to learn more about, learn more about the future of the programs, which are programs, which are we just launched we just our new website. So, so proud of it. Uh, uh, Comed.com backslash COF, which stands for Community of the Future. Uh, if you want to learn more about the smart grid and how it works and how it benefits the community, you can go to Comed.com backslash smart grid uh, to learn more information about that. And lastly, if you want to learn how to take advantage of some of the incentives and uh, discounts that ComEd offers customers uh, for, for home upgrades, small business upgrades, uh, you can go to ComEd.com. So yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. So we'll make sure to put all those links in the notes for this episode. Um, well, where I'll be listening when it's safe to, to do so, you can look down below. Um, and if you enjoyed this episode, we have more than 40 episodes of our Energy Force series. 
And all you have to do is, um, again, if you're listening, uh, if you're watching this on your phone right now, um, uh, you you might want to share this to your TV uh, or to your computer so you can be able to actually scan this. Um, but we also put the link on here so you can scan and listen or you can stream um, more than 40 of these Energy Force series episodes at specialtentacles.com slash Energy Force or follow, like Kuita did, follow uh, Special Chronicles wherever you get podcasts. And, uh, yeah, so, but the, probably the easiest, a lot of our, uh, um, probably a lot more of our newer listeners have found is by simply uh, taking, uh, open up the camera on your phone and just scan this uh, QR code and you can uh, get, um, listen to all of our Energy Force series episodes, including the, I'm, I'm sure, Chris, you will be, um, uh, uh, after we jump off, you will probably be going to listening to that Trees for You and Me episode. Mm -hmm. uh, fun fact, we all a couple of tree jokes in that episode. So uh, I'll let you, a um, little um, entertainment, um, in addition to being informative. Um, but um, uh, I'm sure, um, I think, Kuita, you might have mentioned the um, Pauling Lives Education episode with our guest, um, uh, Lisa. I think, Chris, you, you might have mentioned that as well. Uh, but, yeah, we've got tons of tons of uh, uh, good content um, for all of you. So I know we will post in 51 minutes, so uh, this will be a little bit less, hopefully less than an hour, so we, we should wrap it up now. Do uh, you have any final thoughts on your overall time here today on the Special Chronicles program that you'd like to share with our listeners? No, uh, we uh, we visit our links. There's a lot of good information there, and a lot of people think that letting for that all of these words words have to be have to be hard to navigate. But there are lots of out there, money, information where you where it's supported, supported to make decisions. Awesome, and Chris. Yeah, and just uh, and, you know, uh, if you, you, if you, you want to know, know more about, more about what's happening at Comet, Comet, go to Comet.com, Comet.com, the website, the website. Uh, call us at call us one eight hundred one. Ask, one, ask, and, and we have a lot of resources lot of available, available um, and we want you to take advantage of it. It helps us when when people take advantage of everything that we're doing. We're working hard on these projects. And, uh, building out these programs and pilots, but if the customer doesn't take advantage of it, you know, it really we don't really see it. We don't really see it full potential. So potential. So please inquire. Please inquire. So it's here. It's here. We're here. Awesome. We're here. Awesome. And so um, we will. Um, I, I think I'm um, Chris. You had also said that there's a phone number that you will send me. So I'll make sure to put that in the description as well. Um, but yeah, we'll make sure um, for those of you listening, um, the, the phone number, I believe, for the smart grids that uh, we will um, put in the notes. But then also um, we've, we've mentioned the 1-800-Edison-1 um, the number a few times on, 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 um, on past episodes, but we'll make sure to put uh, that phone number uh, as well as these resource links uh, for all of you um, um, that want to learn more to call and get, get, get in touch with um, with with any of the uh, staff at ComEd. So with that, we got one final question. Um, but let's go ahead and roll that bumper to introduce that final question. Oh, wait. That was the wrong button. Here we go. We're not just athletes. We are the ambassadors of an uprising. Peaceful protesters. In a rebellion against anyone who has a fear of difference. 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 Our demands are equality. 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 Dignity. 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 And the recognition of our shared humanity. We will not stop or accept anything less. Today, our world is more divided than ever. And coming together has never been more urgent. The revolution is inclusion. Find out more at jointherevolution.org. So we don't just want our listeners to consume this content, but we, we want our listeners to uh, actually uh, uh, take action into the communities, bring inclusion, um, bring uh, not not only inclusion, but bring the, the, the small grid and these kind of resources into their communities. 
uh, to to make society better. So it's not just about being entertaining and informative on the podcast, but actually now finally in the final final couple minutes uh, to take um, inclusion into it. And I've been asking this ever since I came back from the 2019 Special Olympics World Games in Abu Dhabi. This final question that gets to the heart of what this podcast is all about. And that is, uh, what does inclusion mean to you? Oh, uh, and you can uh, answer that either related to the come out smart grid or just uh, in society overall. Quito, um, we'll go to you first and then um, I'll pass it over to Chris about what does inclusion mean to, to you? Sure. And sure. I think um, for me, inclusion, 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 inclusion,
I think that's right. Yeah. So thank you again, Chris and Guido. No problem. Thanks for having us. Looking forward to talking to you again. Yeah, absolutely. And until then, everyone, take care and uh, have a great week. But, uh, take care. Thank you for listening to this episode of the Special Chronicles podcast. Our podcast was produced by Daniel Smikowski on the Special Chronicles Network. Follow Special Chronicles on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, and YouTube. Subscribe, rate, and review Special Chronicles on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you listen to podcasts. Our website, specialchronicles.com, where you can stream our archives of over 500 episodes for absolutely for free. Also, there's a list of our favorites, original series, award-winning columns, and blogs. And sign up for our newsletter to receive exclusive bonus content delivered to your inbox. Again, specialchronicles.com. Special Chronicles is hosted by Podbean Podcast Hosting. Our live streams are powered by StreamYard. Thanks, as always, to our business manager, Adam Smukowski, who always in- encourages us to never give up. I'm Daniel Smukowski, back next week with more stories. Special Chronicles, giving respect and a voice to people.